Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's James Grand Frog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. Show. Hi. Hi, Kelly. How are Hi. you doing? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm sorry about the tornado we just heard about. Oh, we were just talking about that. Yeah, boy. Tornado, wow. I'm sorry for everybody in, in those states, in Illinois and it's Kentucky. Really sad. Yeah, really sad. Yeah, the weather patterns are a bit odd these days, eh? Oh, listen, it's I mean, 60, Mark, 65 degrees in my house. Yeah. It makes no sense in Wisconsin. You like a storm, weren't you? Like there was yeah. a storm your way. We had a storm, I think, for a second. And then <laughs> next thing you know, the sun came out and it's spring. And I live in Wisconsin. It makes no sense. Yeah. And and, and there's a, is, is there, a, I know you're going to talk about astrological things going on right now, but is there a sense of disorientation? Because I've been feeling oh, disoriented. What like, a great. Day -day. What a great word to use of this time it, period, actually. It, it's like I think of because it's like what it feels like. like I feel disoriented. I'm not sure what day it is or what, what day of the week. I mean, what date it is. Yeah. December 13th now. but No, but you're right. It, it, it has a I feeling. I don't really care to know either, you know. <laughs> I understand that, too. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of aspects that are going on. In what fact, happening in these heavens. Well, let's just talk about even tonight. Tonight is a meteor shower. It's a they call it the Gemini meteor shower, and so it brings a lot of mischief. It's today and tomorrow, and it brings mischief, oh, and you're going to feel uncomfortable, you know, yeah. for a lot of reasons yeah. from this meteor yeah. shower. Some places you can watch it. Um, it's just an, it's a kind of an intense time, but also today was a very pretty intense day. So today Mars entered Sagittarius and that itself brings intensity and explosion. And it's just means intense. Mars is the planet of intensity and anger and battles and, 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 and battles and it's and in Sagittarius and like mouth disease, like, whoa, go Sag without exactly. thinking, check without thinking. Exactly. And at the same time, Mercury, the fastest moving planet, went into Capricorn. Is so that Cap restrictive? Yeah, well, actually, it's going to keep everybody thinking clearly. It's at a good time Thank to think God. clearly, even yeah. though it's a, you know, a shake up time. It will give our, our brains a place to, to go with thinking logically. It means Mercury, to think Capricorn, logically. Is it also like thinking about responsibility? It's responsibility. Okay. It's concentrating on difficult tasks. So let's say you have something you have to really muddle through. You can do it with this. This It's actually, for that part, it's a good thing. Wow. But that's just two aspects or three so far. Let's get down to the 15th. The 15th Please. of I December, can't. which is the day after tomorrow. <laughs> Mars is in Sagittarius, and as I just said, and it conjuncts, which means it's next to the south node. And the south okay. node in astrology is karma. It means karma. And everybody in a birth placement has a north node and a south node. Sure. And the north node is where you go forward. And the south node is really about karma. And it's a very intense day on the 15th. So I want everybody to watch old conflicts because this is a day that is combustible things could blow yeah. up kelly so let you, me ask you let me ask you so the south node now when you say i know the south node is a past and the north node is a future but are you talking about um would you be talking about hmm not just this country's north and south node how would you define it? Everybody uh, I would say the world in the, the world. world. It's the and we world. Don't know what the south node of the world is or the north node of the world. Yeah, is. no, I mean, this is, uh, I know it affects my, everybody. My north is Libra. I know that. And everybody yeah. has a south and north. Everybody node. has a south node in their birth chart. But this, right. for the for the world, this is where we are with this right now. Okay. And it could be, you know, so for everybody, watch your thinking on that day you don't have to go into old wars okay you really don't it's not a time to do that at all and then when we <laughs> get to the, i'm not done yet i feel like carol merrill and then there's more mm -hmm. okay yeah so on december 18th and we've been talking about this for some time yeah. for, venus goes retrograde in capricorn for 40 days 
40 days is a long time for Venus to go retrograde. Typically, it's just a few days. Now we're talking 40 days and it's in Capricorn. So what this is going to be for everybody, it's going to it's a good time for uh, doing some deep soul searching, deep soul searching. Get prepared to know maybe a new you, maybe get to know a new you for this. And um, this is going to be all about self-worth. It's how how do we feel about money? It has to do with money too, because it's in Capricorn. So it will teach us values. So it's going to be an interesting time. And on, actually, I'm going to jump ahead for a second on Christmas, you know, that's the day that we'll talk about more of this next week, but on Christmas, this Venus retrograde that I'm talking about, again, conjuncts Pluto. So that day could be kind of explosive too, with old shadow stuff coming up with family members, you know, always a fun thing. Always great in the holidays, isn't it? Not. Um, so that's, so this is Venus retrograde. On December 19th, because <laughs> I'm not done yet, there's a full moon in Gemini. Oh. And this is all, this full moon is about releasing. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be releasing old emotions, um, old stories, old dramas. It's this full moon, a great thing to do for this particular full moon it would be to do a great meditation for yourself and really honor yourself because this year was hard. This year was a hard year. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree with that? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I really feel that we all learned something about ourselves this year. And I'd really honor your journey for this year. It's been a, it's been I, a heck I, of a journey. I think really because of Fulon and Gemini and Gemini Rules Communication, I think it'd be a really, really great idea for, for everybody and there are many ways of releasing things. But for mm -hmm. me, because Gemini rules the writer, I think it's great to write your things down that you want to release. And then when great. you're done, take a candle and burn it and let the ashes go up. Excellent. I think Excellent. it's a great, great moon Gemini, that full moon Gemini releasing yeah. all, all the emotions, writing it down with Gemini rules writers. Oh, Good. my God. It's a great idea for this. Super. Yeah. And really honor yourself with this. You, all of us have been through a lot. And I just got to say, Kelly, that I, what I feel when you talk about the, uh, the astrological earlier, there's an intensity, like you mentioned, but I definitely feel that sense of intense and quick and fast. So take take extra time, everybody. Just take yeah. extra time and pause a little bit, right? Because yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Quickly. Even cars, driving your cars, slow down. Traffic signals, slow down, extra, right? extra time to get places. This is the time to do that, especially on top of that, we have the holidays. So slow down. <laughs> slow right? down. Oh, my gosh. Well, and the last thing I'll talk about right now is on December 19th, again, Chiron goes, Chiron is the wounded planet, the, the wounded healer, yeah. and it turns direct in Aries. It turns direct after, after I think it's been retrograde since July. It's a long time. And so this is a time to actually restore, restore yourself. It's really a time to restore um, your life. It's, it's time to, as you were saying, really it's time to take care of yourself and honor your journey. It's supporting yourself. It's, it, it's self-care. It's self-care. Self That's the word self-care. Self-care. Mm -hmm. I, I get that really strong in the past couple of weeks. I've had that sense of, we all have to fall into self-care now. And a lot of us who are, sensitives and healers and empaths are really good at taking care of other people but we forget about ourselves sometimes and we talked about this yesterday on the show we did the benefit we did together and it's really about self-care that's taking yeah. take time to take care of yourself what yeah. good are you to other people if you don't take care of yourself right right and you just did an article i think on that on I your did. website or uh, yeah a blog. yeah i did a blog yeah care yeah because it's an important mm. time to do that now and and, yeah. and you get it astrologically, and I just energetically, I just feel that as well. You feel that intensity, yeah. and uh, I don't think it's a good time to travel either, right? Not a good time for traveling. So I never have to not. travel. We travel for a family and holidays, but generally speaking, recreational traveling not a great idea. Huh? Probably not a great idea because not as idea. we get closer to the Christmas, we have a, the biggest astrological event of the season, which is Saturn squaring Uranus, and that's on December 23rd, 24th, and that's going to be a, we'll talk about it next week, but it's going to be a very intense time because Saturn is the old and Uranus is the new, so yeah. it's going to be a battle. So it's right at the time of Christmas. I don't think it's good, a great good, time. Good time to journal, everybody, too. Good time to start journaling. Yeah. Definitely start journaling, and I guarantee you start journaling now. 
And in January, you'll start journaling again. It'll be completely different, what you, what you put down the page. Oh, I love that. It's a good time to do that. And then see in January what happens and just do it like twice a week, three times a week, but do it every week. And then January, see what happens. I'm very much, I'm developing my course right now for next year, uh, the game of life. So my head is all about development and self-care and responsibility and, Right. You can see my my desk over here. There's a load of books, and I mean, just it's going to be such a great mind. course, though. It's a great course, but it's also my so my mind is all about that right now. with self care and responsibility, and mm. I realizing that we are thoughts of things and taking care of yourself and each other, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, and speaking of taking care of each other, we have a really interesting topic tonight. Yes, yeah, so and can I just because uh, I don't know if you know this, Kelly, how this came to me with the doula. Yeah. Many years ago, well, I, I was an, a staff, a faculty member at Omega Institute for many years, like 15 yeah. years. And I remember, it had to be about 15 years ago, it had to be. Um, in my audience, the workshops, several people raised their hands. They talked about end of life. And they said, I help people pass over. And at the time, um, there was hospice. We still have hospice. People worked at mm-hmm. a hospice and so forth, volunteers and so forth. But there wasn't a term. And, and we were trying to think of what would, term would we use. And someone said doula, end of life. A birther, um, and we're trying to come an end of life doula kind of stuck, and now I'm happy to say that that term not not that I originally originated that term, but it seemed to be that was what was happening in the, the ethers of the time, and now it's become very well known, and a lot of people are end of life doulas, they're called end of life doulas, helping people pass over, helping people transition. Right, that's fascinating that you that's were on the cutting edge with that. Yeah, it's well, come a long way. Wow, it really has. I mean, and we're going to have approximately 10,000 people a day turning 65. So think about that in the in just in the United States, 65, 10,000 people a day, roughly turning Next 65. Year, January 1st. Wow. Yeah. wow. And so we're really going to need doulas. And I think death doulas and here's an, I thought this was so fascinating, James. It said a survey by the Conversation Project concluded that 90% of people say that talking with loved ones about the end of life is important, yet only 27% have actually done it. Isn't that amazing? Isn't yes. that amazing? I think it's really, really important. I think you should talk about it with your parents, your friends. I, I, I mean, obviously, I would definitely do that beforehand. I, oh, well, and I'm going to tell everybody about something that our friend, our dear friend, uh, Judy Friedman, told me about a, something that was really interesting. And this goes along with what we're talking about tonight. And Renee, if you could post this, it's called, it's a card deck and it's a card sorting game. And it's called Go Wishes, Go, G-O, really? Wishes. And it's about the end of life discussions. Oh, that's fantastic. Is that the greatest thing ever? It's like, when I pass, what would I like? And it's kind of a lighthearted way to get into deep conversations with people that if only 27% of people are talking about it, it's not enough. No, it's not enough. It's not a people fear fear death. And so they don't even want to have that conversation. And it should be the opposite. And people should look forward to it. I mean, really, they should, right. because there's a time to, it's a release. We talked about this yesterday. We did the benefit yeah. yesterday. and. This came up this morning. We talked about it. That spirit said to me after our show yesterday, we did that the body, and I've never heard this. I hadn't heard this term for, for in this context. That the body's a husk. When you when you leave the body, when the spirit leaves, you look back, it's like a husk, like a husk of corn. It becomes a husk. Okay. You, you no longer have a connection with that, and it's only a temporary. There's only a temporary right. shell that we have. Right. Will, everyone's going to go. Everyone's going to move on. So right. it's something to look forward to because you're going to meet all your loved ones and people prepare for you on the other side to come home. It's a homecoming. It's really a homecoming. And I wish people yes. could say it's a home. It's a, it's a death. It's a right. homecoming. It's a reunion. Right. And, and should be happy, not sad. Um, and right. the people in the real world are around us more on the other side than they are here. They're able to be with us more mm-hmm. energetically. They're around us. The, the space is around us. All the time. And the spirit world, many people don't know this, but it doesn't work like this linear three-dimensional world where you have to think you have to go in an airplane or go in a a transportation somewhere. You just have to think of someone you're next to them. And you can be in several places at once when you're in the spirit form of life. You could be in several different places at once. Don't ask me how, when, or why, but I've known this 
thousands of readings I've done. And that was spirit would often say that. You've probably heard this all the time. Yeah, I have. I hear this often. It's yeah. so true. Wow. It's amazing. Well, as humans think of the end of life, right. the end of it. And, and you know, it's, it's important that we have those discussions. Really, really it's, important. Well, and it's so important. And there's such, it's, you know, like, what is the value of a death doula? I think a death doula has so much value because doulas are trained. They're trained professionals. Now you don't need a license to be a death doula, but they're trained professionals who provide assistance and guidance with holistic services to individuals and their families during these transformation times. And they also engage with the real difficult and complex emotions that families go through when somebody's passing. And what I feel about death doulas is that there is such potential for trauma when somebody is passing in a family. There's such potential for it. And I feel that doulas mitigate the trauma going forward. Well, as you're speaking, um, I, I, I know that uh, uh, Elizabeth Kuba Ross did a whole bunch about the stages of grief. Yeah. But she never did. So she also the stages of death. I don't think so. I don't think she ever did. That's a good point. Good point for that. Right that about the stages of death because oh. death doulas help with the stages of well, death. they help with the place and it, let me tell you what they do because it's so fascinating to me because first of all, let me just say this even before we say what they do. If you are considering becoming a death doula, if you're considering it, you need to have some traits and these traits would be empathy, compassion and some form of being logical and organized you need a lot of education with grief personal experience with grief would help kindness um loving and you have to be able to read the family you're working with and the person who's passing away you have to be able to understand what they're going through so if you have those qualities empaths are great for this don't you think, James? One hundred percent, and 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 being able to, like you say, read the room because there's mm -hmm. a lot of emotional. It's an emotional, emotional like thing there that happens. Oh. I've been many times, and in my in my own father's death, and some people don't know how to react to grief or to react to the death, and a lot of stuff comes right. up. So it has to be somebody who's really open to dealing with that, being able to deal with all these different emotions mm -hmm. and all these like, relationships in a family and friendship and also yes. partners and so forth, because there's so many various emotions that the person really should be open to all of that and yes. being able to do kind of several things at once. You have to be able to do several things at once. Well, for, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and there's some great organizations that help people along the way. One of them is called the National End of Life Alliance. National End of Life and Alliance. And I think, Renee, you might put that in the up somewhere for everybody. Um, and that's a really great organization because it helps to give, uh, it helps you become, not to become a, a doula, but it helps you understand what, what goes on with the process of being a doula. And I think that's going to be really important. But there's a big difference between um, a death doula and a funeral director and a hospice worker. Oh, yeah, very much so. So, you know, uh, as a hot, I thought that a hospice worker and a death doula were the same, but they're absolutely not. Very, very different. Very, very, very different. different. And you have to prepare the space, a death doula, depending upon their um, awareness, their, their background, their experience, they prepare the mm -hmm. space in all different ways. Energetically, they can prepare the space. Mentally, they prepare the space. They prepare yes. the space for the one who's leaving the body and for those who are around the body. Right. Um, there, there are, you know, I, I like that stages of death. I think I'm going to write something about that. I, I really do. I think I'll write something about a stage of death. Maybe I'll write a little book or something, but I, I think there are like three main stages, but there are stages of death. Yes, yeah. they're very aware of them, and they help. Mm -hmm. They help facilitate that the moving on, and it's again, it's a natural process. And they're right. and, and they they do their work like we have midwives. The same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a midwife for those who are going on to the other levels. It's like we have midwives right. coming in. This is a midwife for those going out. It's all it right. is. Well, and a, and a doula can do a lot of different things. So they cannot provide medication. So that's the difference between somebody in a hospice. They cannot do that. But some of the things that they might do is, and you have to, if you're going to hire one or become one, you have to know your specialty of what you do specialize in. And if you're going to hire one, you want to find one that that will do, does what you would like them to do. And some of the things that they do, they can do advanced health care planning. So they could do some planning ahead of time. They can do practical training for the family caregivers. 
which is interesting. They work they with can, social workers also. They, they work with social workers. workers. They can work help with the funeral. They can help with memorial services. Um, they can do, bring grief support to the per, to the family. They can do grief support to the the one that's passing away, and they can be actively there for the dying patient. Because sometimes family members, it's too much for them. Some people get overwhelmed and they can't do it. And also, Kelly, a lot of people that are, are passing, let's say, don't know about death. Uh, I remember I was helping Debbie Ford pass over. And, and yeah. I did it. And I didn't be there physically. I was there mentally and emotionally with her. And we were connected. Right. And it, you've got to help them to release, um, let to let go. Mm -hmm. And and they get people get tend to get very some people tend to get scared about death because it's the unknown right. to them on the human level. But once right. they ease up that grip and they just go with that that breath, and they follow the breath and the breath brings them all last breath and you release like it's like a feather. Oh, right. it's like a feather. Follow the feather, and go toward that feather. Or sometimes mm -hmm. I've seen it where like the bottom of the of the ocean, you look up and there's the water. Go towards that break where the sunlight is in the water. Go, go. Oh, go. that's interesting. Yeah. And so yeah, there's all different ways. And you once you do it, you know, the death doulas are also supported by the spirit people who are helping them as well. So they're not doing right. it alone. And you're the loved ones of that spirit who are just waiting in anticipation for the loved one to come home. Right. So true. That's so true. And, you know, death doulas really are here for humanity. They're here for humanity. And they can assist the healthy people. They can assist the dying. They can also, I think this is interesting, some of them may specialize in being a celebrant. And I was like, what is a celebrant? And it's a person who performs a rite. Oh, I, you know, I that, did a celebrant. Trust you me. did? I, oh, yeah. My dad was passing away and... uh uh, in, in the hospital in New York, and uh, it was weird. I was like all by myself, and I knew that um, he grew up well Christian, but my mother was very Catholic, and my mother was always about the last rites, always. And I thought my father would not like that, but we're I'm literally waiting for the, him to move on. And all of a sudden, I'm in the telephone booth talking to some Brian on the phone, who just left the hospital thinking everything was okay on the way back to California, and leaving a message on the phone saying, "Come back." And as that's happening, I see a priest walking by, and I'm like, I got to get to him. And I, I was able to do that because I, I knew out of respect to my mother that mm. would be the last. And that's interesting, the last rites. very interesting because really what they're doing, they're anointing the body with the oils. And this is very interesting, Kelly. Uh, they anoint the body in the chakra points. The chakra points. Well, I didn't know that. Now, what is the purpose of that. Well, it's really in esoteric studies, it was really the, the chakra oh. point. So they re, re, helped to release the spirit. And that's oh, why okay. many times in Christian funerals, we'd have the, um, say, laying out or wake, they'd put a candle at the head and the foot so the spirit wouldn't come oh. back into the body. So. <laughs> well, James, that won't be our case. We're out. <laughs> We're out. We're the We're not trying to get back in. <laughs> Never. I'm not afraid. Oh, least. my gosh. So a, a, a doula can be somebody who performs a rite. Yeah. They also, some doulas will only want to work with the advanced directives of somebody, of their last will and testament, you know, whatever their wishes well, it, are. It's really hard for the living to do that because they're very emotionally involved. So it's exactly. very hard. Exactly. It's, it's exactly right. And um, they also, doulas help with legacy projects. So that might be to honor one of your loved ones. You know, it could be a form of photos. It could be music. It could be starting doing a celebration. It could be the last wishes of the legacy project. It could be to, you know, put a, a stone up for this or to do, I don't know, to do something. So I thought well, that as, was kind as of you're saying that, I, As you're saying that, a couple of things occurred to me as you're saying that, because I, I was listening to you speak and things come into me. When, when I just this just washed washed over, if you give the pun, but when I was talking about the last rites, mm -hmm. part of the last rites also in days past. I don't think it's done now. Is um, before they before the spirit leaves the body, they also not only anoint it, but they'll wash the body, preparing the body, and mm -hmm. they wash the body after the spirit leaves as well. The hospital wow. people do, but I know also part of that ritual is to wash the body before the spirit leaves, and it's also opening those points up. So I just heard, and then I just heard the word. Um, I just heard the phrase. You just leave the classroom. Oh, I so love that. Yeah, I have to read. There's a comment here that yeah. caught my attention. It's from Marjorie Hale. And she says, I bet a death doula costs a fortune. And I actually have no idea. I don't think death... so, sweetheart. I, I, don't I don't think, think so either. So. I really don't think they do. No. I really don't. I think it's um, a lot of them are volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that people get into this 
death doula business to make money. I think no, they get into it because it's a soul's cause. It's, you know, the soul needs to be it. It's Absolutely. That, that's a, they, they're paid by compassion. And right. I, I, the ones I know, that's, that's I, I know for sure, it's all compassion. And I think right. it goes along with the way with um, the, the, the awareness that they have is that we're all connected. Mm -hmm. They're helping this person, they're helping the family, they're helping themselves, they're helping one another. I think that's their mindset. I don't think their mindset is prescribed to financial. Just don't. You wouldn't go into I the don't either. That, you wouldn't go into the no. stuff of work if it was that. Yes. Uh, Sharon Duquette. Hi, I volunteered in hospice and did many of these things. And my best suggested is to remind your loved ones of loving memories as it raises the vibration and releases the nerves in everyone present. Sharon, I, I agree with that. And also yeah. another thing you can do too, which is really helpful when the person is in that state, one of the stages of death, is to talk about loved ones that have already passed over. So when you talk oh. about memories of one, I've yes. done this many times with people. And so yeah. do you remember so and so? Do you remember when what did you do with you know your mom or your your or your uncle or your your and, and, and when they're conscious and they can talk about those things, it's really great to have them have the memories. I did with my dad for about a year before he passed. And um, I think that helps the transition because when they see what yeah. those loved ones, they're not so in shock and their mind is thinking of them, which helps them release more. Yeah, no, I agree. I had to laugh. I was thinking of my mom <laughs> because when I said to her, would you like your, to see your mother? <laughs> no, <laughs> she said, it was I hysterical. Remember when she was ill and I said to you, and I think I was walking Maisie, my dog, and I said, I, is there a sister of hers who's, because I keep on this woman next to her. She wants to help her. I think you said yes. it was Cousin it was her, her cousin, cousin, Ruby. It was her first cousin who she absolutely loved. And that's who you were picking up. Yeah. Because our loved ones will go around the, the person that's going to pass. Let's say they're ill for a, a while. It could be three yeah. months. Before. They're around them preparing the space, preparing their mindset. Yes. Um, there are many times where the spirit will find that when they leave the body, they're fully. My mother did this to my father. Um, he was fully dressed in a tan suit. First thing he said to me, he left the body, I'm in a tan suit. Your mother brought me a new suit. I'm 27 years old. This is like minutes after he passed. And, he said, me a new suit. and I'm like, well, how could she do the tan suit? It was done with her mind. So they created, they create that, that outfit, if you will. And they create the space. Something too, which is really interesting. I mentioned this before. Um, not every time, but many times the spirit world will create an environment or a scenario where the loved one goes to their mother's house that they remember mm -hmm. as they were younger. The mother's house and it looks exactly like it did with wow. the wall coverings with furniture with the cups in the and the shelves because they want it helps with the the uh the getting the getting used to the new environment they're uh, yeah. uh, they're really uh, helping them to become aware of their new environment i guess it would say acclimate acclimate themselves to yeah. this new place so they tend to do that when it's when it's a little tougher so I'll often find that you're in the mother's house Oh, I love that. That's so peaceful, actually. Stella Deanne says, I've had many friends pass over, two of cancer. I have never heard of a doula. Thank and bless you both for this information. I think you're so welcome, but I think this information is so important, James, don't you? I do. And I know Passover comes from the passing over, but I think the better phrase would be passing out. <laughs> passing. You know what my father said? He said, I'm flying away. He it's actually said away, that. Passing out, flying away. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's oh my more, gosh. Passover, I think it's passing out is really more of what it passing is. Passing out. We're going to pass out now. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about this for a second. What do doulas do? They facilitate end of life planning. Okay. They do mediation and advocacy so that the dying person's wishes are honored. That's a big one. They do comfort measures for the dying. And I think that's extremely important um, because the role may never may not be medical. It may be um, not even clinical, but it might be just, you know, deeply emotional trying to help them. And it might be educational, too. And, and a doula should be, especially if someone's terminal, they should, a death doula, I think, should come in at least like a month beforehand, maybe a few months beforehand to yeah. help prepare. It's not to, to and and to, to maybe develop a relationship with the person who's passing or who's uh, what did you call it? <laughs> Not passing out. Uh, yes, uh, passing, passing out. out. <laughs> yeah, and, and and the family and the people that are left behind uh, gain their trust. Absolutely, because trust. absolutely one of the things too is they're here for emotional support. So doulas do emotional support. So anybody who's thinking of it, you might want to take some classes again in grief. You may want to take some classes in psychology, anything like that, or spirituality. Any of James's classes in spirituality would be fabulous for this. Um, and you might help the person who's 
passing, who's leaving, who's ill, do a life review, which is interesting. They could do a life review with somebody. Imagine that you're sitting there and you're telling, you know, the person is telling you about their life and you're doing a review with it. What do you think? I think it's great, especially when there are situations where there's, um, because, you know, it, it's so often that so many souls who pass out of the body mm -hmm. are still holding on to stuff from the past. Like yes. Traumas, childhood, not being able to forgive friends, siblings, partners. It's a yeah. great time to let go and forgive. And you know, like, I got chills when you said that. I think so that's, that's so true. important. It's so important because you do not want to pass over to the other side of life yeah. with that energy. You don't want, and again, yeah. it's time to release it while you're down here. Same with addictions. It's best to leave the addictions, including the mind addictions, down yeah. here. And you don't so want to bring true. them over to the other side because they're amplified on the other side. So if you don't forgive somebody down here, you bring that over and it's amplified over there. And you have nothing you can do about it on the other side. Just live with that. And that can be a living hell. So oh you want to make gosh. sure you're done with that while you're here. Right. And doulas can provide that. They can help you to look at your life in an objective way and um, really reach out maybe to some people, maybe write a note or a letter. Mm -hmm. You don't have to speak to them verbally, but certainly you can, in your mindset, forgive them in some way. And it's important. It's really, really important that's done, that everything's put to rest, if you will. The bed is made. Everything is, is finished. I love that. Physical body. Everything is perfect. Your house is in order. Your house right. is in order before you go. Oh my gosh. Karen uh, Bilehart says, I was with my mom when she passed away a few days ago. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry Bless about you, that. She took about three days to pass. She moaned every now and then, but the last 24 hours, she stayed quiet. And I talked to her and held her. But right before wow. she passed, she lifted her head up to try and tell me something. Is this common? Yes, very much so. And many times they'll talk about uh, their mother there, their father there, their loved ones there. They're, they're, I've seen it happen. My mother did that. My, my father mentioned a couple of times before he passed, the day before, he seen so-and-so in the room. And yeah, they usually see the spirit coming to get them and they're reacting to that. Ah, that makes so much sense. And there's also a time before they're passing. They, get, they, they can be ill for a long time. And then right before they pass, could be an hour before they pass, could be a couple of couple of days before they passed, they seemed to be in perfect health. It happened to my father. He was in perfect health and sent everybody home because he said his pneumonia is gone. Within two hours, it came back or went to the other lung. And he said, oh, he's going to pass now. But yeah. that happens. It's quite, quite uh, frequent that that happens where people are just perfect in sign of health oh, and they go. That's exactly what happened right. to me. My mom got a burst of energy. Everybody said she was good. She was going to be around for some time. So I was very sick. I took a bunch of pills because I was really, really sick, knocked me out. And then I got a phone call. And I'm going to tell you, I had to drive Don. Thank God Don drove me all the way back to Beverly Hills from where I was. And it was a long distance. And I was out and I, the adrenaline came through my body, you know, that adrenaline. Sure. Oh, that was Oh, what a day. Yeah, but, you, but you know, something also, Kelly, which you mentioned, which which happened to you, what happens to everybody is you physically, the ones left behind, a drain by the time some, and it depends on how you get this. Like I know in your situation, with your mom, oh. it was a long illness, especially a long illness. The physical ones left behind are drained. They're just emotionally spent. I would so have loved to have had a, that as well. To make I would them. have loved to have had a doula. Exactly. Right. <laughs> what I ended up with was a crazy ass hospice nurse who was insane. Oh, what a day thank that God was. You had your awareness. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank, I, God. thank God. You had your <laughs> um, but they also provide doulas provide a respite for caregivers, and caregivers get burned out. So we're talking get, about. And, and as we're you said, about caregiver. No, I, I know. You wouldn't and stop. I you wouldn't really stop. Wouldn't. No, you 10 wouldn't. years. I didn't stop. You didn't. No, I you didn't did. stop. Amazing. I, I was, and I'm really grateful that I did it, but it was, I was pretty burned out at the yeah. end. Um, And then the, they also can provide logistical support and household support. Interesting enough. So let's say you are a doula that likes to help with clutter. There might be a lot of clutter. You, you're, you know what I mean? There are certain yeah. People, depending on what you specialize in, but another important thing that a doula does is they can do after death care, which would be to help with the family, because then we're talking about a funeral. Now we're talking about a memorial. We're talking about a celebration of life True. or something. Um, and there are a lot of emotions that come with it. And a doula might be really um uh, trained well to help people with emotions. And again, I want to say to mitigate trauma, I think. 
Yeah, and, and I, I think it's really important that the living person or family or friends have a relationship with that doula. So that's why I said yeah. get to meet them maybe months if you can, months beforehand. Right. And start a relationship. And the uh, the NEDA, the National End of Life Alliance, is a really good beginning mm -hmm. uh, of a place to look for, National End of Life Alliance. And also various hospices in your state, your city mm -hmm. where you live. They would dub it an end of life doula. It's, it's really becoming um, very, very yeah. popular now. Yes, it, just, it is. It's, but it's like, not for everybody. It's for somebody. It, it, you have to have a lot of empathy, compassion, right. organizational skills. You have to really be able to, again, read the room of what everybody's going to need. Now, Cheryl Crawford asked a good question. She said, are there doulas that can help with Alzheimer's? I don't know, but I'm going to say yes. What would you say? Yeah, Probably. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know about that. I really, I wish I did. Um, I know there are certain hospice places, one right near me, actually down the street from here where I live, and it's mm -hmm. specialized in Alzheimer patients and memory and memory care facility. And um, I think they have their own specialists in there with, with that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, so it's a whole other thing. Alzheimer's is, is, is a whole different thing. I, I, I brought through many spirits who've um, had all this past and that had Alzheimer's. And I remember one in particular, I wrote about it in one of my books. And it was a man who came back and he didn't understand why his funeral was there weren't he was so popular in life knew lots and lots of people but there were only a handful of people at his funeral and he was shocked and it was told to him that you know you had alzheimer's for many many years and people you knew had passed away and there weren't many people living behind so it was, it's interesting oh. alzheimer's is a whole different thing yeah yeah really, you know and, and and your spirit can go and come out of the body and leave the body and visit mm -hmm. and, and but again, us humans, we, we don't know what... what right, exactly. Lisa Fabry Dunn, this is a really good point. She says, having a death doula for people without family would be a wonderful thing. Great 100%, point. 100%. Yeah. You don't have to go in, in alone. You don't want to go through this alone. It's, it's a tough one. Tough one. It, it can be, yeah. And, and and really, a doula is about birth. It's rebirthing. It's it's a celebration of life. And it's, it's, it's bringing them to another life. And that's right. what it's about. And... Uh, I think I think as time goes on, that pe hopefully, hopefully uh, we evolve our consciousness and the human consciousness that we get to a point where we realize there is no death, and that we're right. afraid of it. It's something to look forward to, and that that, that fear goes away. I mean, that's what my our work is about, right. and uh, hopefully that'll change the way people look at things. Uh, well, I mean, I hope that the discussion can come up now. Tammy, hi, Tammy Hendricks. She says hi, to Tammy. remind us that the Open Center in New York has a thanatology program. And that's going on now. And they do a workshop on being a doula. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Tammy. Wait, what, yep, yes, yep, it's a great center. This is, I think this is helping so many people, James. People are really, um, really liking this conversation. So Linda yeah. Mary, well, I me, get. Okay, go on. Well, I get visits from past loved ones. They only last a few minutes. It's not a dream. It's a visit. I feel like I have been around them in the flesh when the visit is over. Can either of you please explain your definition of a visit? Um, um, uh, well, obviously you're getting loved ones seeing you. Well, well, you're very mediumistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it, you're, you're with them and you're just picking up on them mediumistically. So they're always around us. Right. But you're open to receive them. And and the more you, it's funny enough, the more you think about it, then it'll close that door. But they're always <laughs> around us. So you're getting a look into that that world, that realm, if you will. Imagine right. if you prepared yourself. Imagine if you developed your mediumship. You'd be able to see them and feel them more often. I, I did want to say, Kelly, because this hit me, doulas are not just here on this side. So there are those on the other side whose specialty it is, is to help those pass over on the other side of life. Oh. So it might be your lo loved ones and relatives, of course, they come to get you and greet you. You're always met by your loved ones. But there are also those specialists who help people pass over on the other side. And sometimes I find it depends on the condition that the person is passing over. So mm -hmm. for instance, I spoke about this just recently that uh, someone dies of a drug overdose. More than often, they'll have those who have died of that condition help that person over because they have been through that experience and they know what mm -hmm. that soul is going through. So those right. are on the other side, their doula is there to receive. Wow, wow. Kat Shoa. Hi, Kat. A friend Hi. of mine who is a corporate attorney and a union negotiator witnessed the slow death of a loved one and decided to become a hospice minister. Great work. I guess that's a death doula. So much meaning in what he does. Great work. Oh, my gosh, Kat. That's an amazing story right there. 
Yeah, that's exactly from that. lawyer to death, Julia. <laughs> that's amazing. Good work. Good work. Yep. It sure is. Wow. Um, let's see. Joe Marcus, death doulas give you permission to grieve. Oh, that's so true. And have a breakdown if needed. Very true. Jay, Took classes very true. when I got my degree. Explain and answer questions about death that families may not know or be embarrassed to ask. Thank you, Jay, for, for mentioning that. 100%. 100%, yeah. 100% Jay. I mean, people get odd or weird talking about the next stage. I mean, eventually, we're all going to die. And, and it's really interesting, but the people that are going to passing out, that are beginning that staging of death, mm -hmm. sometimes they need permission to go. Many times they need permission to leave because they'll wait for their family to give them permission to stay or to leave. And it's hard for the family members to go, oh, don't go, don't go. When really we want to do the opposite. And it's very, very hard sometimes for them to do that. And you're really assisting the loved one if you let them go. But sometimes us, our egos and the human part wants them to stay. So I think that's why souls go off and when you have to go to the bathroom. It happens at most, and I, I've mentioned this before in the show, Cemetery Club. You should watch that, everybody. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. It's a really good one. It talks well, it, it just goes into that. My mother passed away when my father was visiting her, this nursing home. He was going down the elevator. My sister was coming up the other elevator, and she died in that time of the, him leaving and her coming in. There was like seconds <laughs> passed. And most of us, we come in alone, we go out alone. Right. And I think it, and it happens to a lot of us. I mean, I've got to stay there. I've got to be a death watch. Why? Don't do not do that. Right. It, it's better if you're not in death watch and you give them their love. They feel your love no matter what. So do you, I always get this during mom. readings. I always get people that say, oh, I left and I should have been there for my mom or I was on a plane and I couldn't get there. You weren't supposed to be there. A hundred to hundred percent. I've had a hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent. I've had spirits say, "I didn't watch you there. I don't watch it. Did you didn't right. be there. Don't do that to yourself. Don't right. Do that don't yourself. beat yourself up over that. My God. No, no reason to. We no reason to. That's also no. a control issue too. By the way, um, oh, Kathy, so is there always a spirit to come and help you? Over always. They're all around us right now, just helping us live this life every day. Right. We have guides and loved ones who are helping us with our mission. We're certainly not going to be left alone when it's time to move on to the uh, back home, to the light world, to the higher right. life. No, we're, we're, they're there to help us to the higher life. No one's ever alone, ever, 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 even no. if you feel alone. Um, I was feeling alone yesterday, and Kelly knows I was a little depressed yeah. because of things that were going on. Or you had, a rough, you had a rough time. <laughs> and um, I had to pull myself out of it. I just couldn't. I just, it was just a lot. But it's like, you know, I know I was not alone. But I, and I could just feel the spirit world. Like, like, <laughs> Oh, he's being human again. He's going to the human part of himself. Oh, James. It was, it was right after our show we did, our benefit was great. Right. And I was, I was, was amazing. Was crashing down oh. afterwards because they were so high. and went crashing down. Oh, honey. And, um, I can just feel the spirit world saying, oh, there he goes being human. There he goes. <laughs> But it's part of being human. It's part of being human. You know? It is. Okay, Margaret Cowie says, in a book about hospice care, they say, have this conversation and say the following, I love you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. So, yes, it helps us and them. Yes, it's a very famous um, Hawaiian saying. That, oh, that, is it? Oh, you know, yes. Yeah, well, yes, please oh. forgive me. Yes, I forgive you. Yeah. Hiya, waya. Oh, yeah. You know, it's that very famous Hawaiian mm -hmm. saying. It's true. Mm, yeah. I think forgiveness goes a long way, James. Well, forgiveness is a medicine. It's for it's a medicine. It's it yeah. really is. It's the it's a it's the end all. It's a, it's it's a really it is the medicine for everything. I think forgiveness because you got to be take the high road. You know, even if, it's hard to give. The harder it is to forgive, the more you should forgive. Right, right. <laughs> the um, more you're called upon. Joanne Selby Pope. When my father passes away, when my father passed away in 2019, my brothers and I were with him. I knew he had gone, his eyes opened up, and he had tears in his eyes looking up. I knew he was with my mom. What I don't understand is where the feeling of white came from. I am thinking it was my mother coming to meet him. Am I wrong? I don't know how to explain it any better. Well, um, I don't know either because we don't know really what you're saying, but I'm going to assume that there's there's a mist. Uh, That's, yeah, heard. I was going to say that yeah, too. And this, many times you'll see a soul who's uh, passing out of the, the husk that there's a, a mist that, that you'll see. Yes. Sometimes you see it building up it's per body and then it goes. Um, and I, I've been aware of that. And I've been aware of them when they've been spirits of, I've really mo more been aware of it when they leave the body than, than spirits coming to visit. I've been more aware of them leaving the body with that mist. And also um, 
a luminous light, not very bright, but I'm very aware of yeah. a, little, a little bit of a light. And, and you can feel the energy shift as it goes. Oh, I felt the energy immediately chakra, shift. Usually yes. crack chakra. Yeah. And, and I find that it's very important that um, if you're with somebody in the side of the bed, the doulas will do this. When you're holding their hands, and many times in reading, spirits come back and they say, um, they say uh, there's something he was with you on the left side of the bed. You, you, were, you were with them on the left side of the bed holding their hand. And they want to thank you for that. And spirit will often talk about the last bits of love that you gave them, holding their hand, brushing their mm -hmm. hair. They, they've really, those little things mean so much to them at the end. Wow. It helps them pass. So that's really, really important. And a doula would know that. It's very important. Right, right. Oh, um, that's great. Doreen Fogra says, a family, a family priest told my mother-in-law to let go of the earth. I love that. Let go of the earth. Isn't that great? <laughs> Write that one down. That's go a really good one. There it oh is. Oh my gosh. Panapia. I can't pronounce it. Panapia is a wine practice of reconciliation and forgiveness. There are many on YouTube. Yes, videos. Oh my gosh. Okay, Renee, now we're ready for that comment. I'm so sorry. Renee, can you put that back up again? There was a comment there. I'm sorry we missed it. Um, I see, Nina Smith said, I've seen my ex's sons. Wow. M missed. It was more like, wow. More like a, st a stream of smoke. Yep. Yeah. That could be. Oh, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, wow. Let's see. So Avril Hogan, my loved one passed away in a hospital, but I had a green light show at home at 3 a.m. Yeah. The room was then frozen in temperature for a time. Yeah. Are yeah. they in stress as they leave like no. this? Not at all. Um, a fr being frozen is a very big part of it. When Debbie Ford passed over, the first thing I felt was incredible iceberg freezing. I was like, Whoa, it's so cold. And it was like, the, it was like I remember when you told me that. Oh, it was a sudden drop in temperature. It was like so icy cold. And she just wow. passed. And they will do that. You'll feel a change in temperature. It changed, wow. it changed the vibration, if you will. I wish wow. I knew more about it, but it, I don't, as being the human box we're in. But that's very, very common. Um, there's no terrified, nothing at all. It's just the opposite. It's something in the body. And, and, and right. I don't know, at times like that, when you feel that ice cold, leave when you, I just keep on sending them love, sending them love on their way, on their way, on yeah. their way. Instead of saying, stay, oh, and, and, and crying. You know, what's that famous uh, the American um, heritage, the, uh, the saying that when, um, you know, in, in our world, when, when you're born, everyone's um, happy and we're crying. But when yes. you dance, right, you cry and we're happy. We're happy. Right. That's so true. So true. Oh my gosh. Um, Alexandra says, Millen Zach says, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. But I love the, I forgive you for the dying. They need forgiveness to pass sometimes. Yes. Yeah, they do. They forgive you for the dying. They do. And let them pass. Let them pass. Give them a hall pass. I remember before my mom died, she said to me, was I a good mother? My mom was an incredible mother. She was an incredible mother. I yeah. said, you were an incredible mother. And I think she just needed to hear it, you know, again. Sometimes they do. And sometimes they, it's okay to go. I love you. And um, you're always with me. And you can always come back and visit. But now go home and, and go see. I, I always often will tell them, go see your, your mother, your, your grandmother. Go see loved ones, your friends who used to go to school with. Go ask how they are. And they're like, oh, right. because it gets their mind ready and kind of to that level of just wanting to go. Because they're looking for their old friends or their old the memories. Right, right. It helps them with their mind and mm -hmm. the mind. Leaves, well, leaves. it calms them down. It calms them down, you know, because there is, there can be that fear of the unknown, of the of the minute unknown at that time. But and that's where it's you. always good to, to, to uh, if you will, um, I, I say, stroke their hair, pet them, go with their breathing, and just yeah. reassure them. Just reassure, reassure them. them. Yes. So Missy Jade said, I was present when my partner passed in sudden circumstance. I was telling him that it was okay to go, even though I was in a state of shock. I could feel the energy change immediately. Bless your heart, Missy. That's yeah, a hard one. Missy, that's hard when you gave him permission to leave, which is oh, really, when, really and, and she was in shock herself. And that's true. That's what happens. It, oh. it's, you, you, you're in shock. You're like, oh, I don't want to say this, but I have to. And like, it's okay to go. And you're like, oh, oh. it's okay to go. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's real good. love when, when that happens. Real love. It's, it's real love. You know, um, people are loving this conversation, James. Yes, yeah, Sue Wells. It looks, my mom called me on the phone to tell me she loved me a few hours after her death. She kept saying, I love you, Susan, over and over again. And when I said, I love you too. She hung up. I tried to call block, but back the number, but it was a dead silence. Wow. Mm. Wow. Um, interesting. 
let's uh, let's see here. Uh, my There's gosh, so many, so many com. I know. <laughs> Hard for me to keep up with the comments. Yeah. So Tina Kruger says, "My dad passed last month on my parents' sixty-first wedding anniversary. Wow, wow! I believe he held on to the last couple of days, knowing that that day meant so much to my mom. He, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how that happens. I, I don't, but I've heard of it over and over again. Me People too. Birthdays and anniversaries yeah. and loved ones who their partner passed and they pass a week later or a day later or a month later. It does happen. It does yeah. indeed happen for sure. And let's talk about death doulas or doing that work with pets and animals. Well, really important. Really, 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 really important. important, Tammy. I know you're listening. It's really important work because some people, when you're about to lose a, a pet, a, a beloved pet, it's too much. I, well, I'm already thinking of when my Maisie goes and I can't yeah. stop it. And it's just, I know I'll be a complete wreck. And I just, uh, with we'll all my knowledge you. and awareness, I know I'll just be a complete I wreck. So I it's know. Gonna be really, really hard. So yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough one with animals, especially those you got to, it's, but I find it so interesting. We put animals down, but we don't put humans down. I, I find it so weird. Like, yeah. why can't we put humans down? We put animals down. My, my sister-in-law just passed recently, and she suffered at the end. She really, really suffered, and she didn't need to suffer. Didn't need to, but they kept her alive, kept her alive. Sometimes for insurance purposes or the hospital. It's like, no, we should have the compassion to let them go. It's the terminal. Put them out of their pain. We do it for animals. Let's do it for mm -hmm. humans. Mm. How we feel. Mm. Kalana Scott, thank you. My son was killed and I was afraid he was so alone and scared. Knowing he wasn't alone brings some peace. Never, Kalana. Then no one dies alone. No. Ever. No it's one not ever possible. dies alone. Never, ever, ever, ever. Even if it's an accident, an accident. Right. Spirit world knows when things are going to happen. Because it's things just, you know, it, it just happens that way. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it no one ever dies alone. Ever. No. Ever. We never walk alone. Yep. Jacqueline Francis Sherwood, when my daughter passed tragically, she came to me right away. I was in the ambulance and she kept telling me she was sorry. She showed up as a presence in the top of the ambulance. Wow. wow. I, I have a similar story that I know about with a client and it was a young man who was going on a date. He was all ready to go on his date uh, with this girl and uh, he was like 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. He's driving his car and um, he was in an accident and he, he didn't understand what happened. And they, this grandfather was there who had passed. And he said, Todd, you died. And he goes, what do you mean? I'm on a date. He goes, Todd, you died. He goes, well, what are all the ambulances and the, the, the paramedics down there right here for? He goes, he was right next to the accident. And the <sighs> grandfather, you died. He goes, well, undress my, my date. I didn't feel anything. He goes, and the grandfather had shown him his mangled body in the car. Oh. For, him, for him to believe that he was not dead, but he thought he was dead. And he had to take that experience and his grandfather to show him because in his mind, he was still dressed up for a date. So oh something happens like so with children accidents, no one ever goes alone. They're always waiting. It's, it's right. You know, that movie ghost. I love the movie ghost. I really, really do. I think it's a great classic, that movie. I'm a little not sure about the dark part of it. The shadow. Yeah, I don't care for that part either. Yeah. Um, I, for the most part, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. And the other part I didn't like was when we Goldberg at the end has them dance together because I'm like, oh, it's a physical medium. It'd be difficult to right. touch a physical medium. But that's me being technical and Vergonian. <laughs> but uh, I, that was pretty decent, that movie. And yeah. that's so true. We never, that's how easy it is when we leave the body. We just leave. Right. It's a good right. breath. It's a breath. It's an oh ex my. expel of breath. Sue Hecht, this is great. Thank you. I want a deaf doula or I want to become one. I good. am on hospice. When good. I go, when I am ready, even if I'm alone, there will be a lot of people and pets on the other side to greet me. Wow. You bet, Sue. Yeah, they'll be preparing for you. Preparing for you. We're all prepared for it. Our, our, it's a big deal when we go home. Right. A big, big deal. I know this yeah. from a lot of friends that have passed over and they've come back and told me. It's bigger than you've said, James. I've had a lot of clients come back to me who are terminal and they, I, I work them. And I mean, the majority of them, I said, I'm really angry with you. Like, why? You didn't tell me how great it was going to be. You didn't even go wow. nearly close to how great it's going to be. And I said, I didn't know from the human <laughs> point of view how great it's going to be. And, and I've had a couple of them with an attitude come back. Like, you should have told me it was going to be so good. Like, I didn't know. But That's, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Wow. Well, you will have some homecoming. I can tell you that. Well, I, you look will. Forward, I look forward to going home. I know you do. Stacy Eddings, please, can we talk about when people abuse the person who is dying? I'm so upset what happened to my friend. Well, 
That's an awful situation. Are you talking about a hospice worker, Stacy? I'm not sure what you're talking it's, about. It's hard because we don't know the full story. Yeah, here. I don't know the full story. No. If, I mean, that's a that's a tough one to discuss. I mean, I'm happy to talk about it if I have a little more detail there. Yeah, and abuse is no good. Um, no oh, it could be an elder abuse. If that's uh, elder abuse, needs to be reported. Oh, for sure. Well, any kind yeah, of abuse needs to be reported, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, please. Uh, what's the best way to help parents who refuse to discuss end of life? Great question, Beth. Thank you, Beth. <clears throat> well, well I, I, I've been there with some people and asked me that question, and I just do it the easy way. Like even forgiveness, it's hard to forgive somebody. Well, th maybe you can write them a letter or a card or have a thought in your head about forgiveness. <clears throat> you go about it in the way, <clears throat> the best way I would do it, I would do it in a roundabout way. And the best way I would do is like do a life review with them, but not necessarily direct life review. Right. Ask about their past, you know, with memories, their fond memories that they have, and what would they redo again, and make it fun for them to well, discuss where they think it goes, what happens. Well, what would be fun is also to get this card deck. It's called Go Wishes. Go, Go wishes. wishes, and that is a card a sorting <laughs> game. It's, it has end of life discussions. It might be a real interesting way to start the dialogue or, you know, however far they can go with it. It might be kind of um, fun and eye opening. I think that's great, Kelly. <laughs> and that was from Judy Freeman. Thank you, Judy. Thanks, Diane Judy. Hepworth uh, Coriel says, I gave my dog Reiki before he passed. It calmed his breathing. Oh, fabulous. So here it is. I have right here. It says, go wish uh, the cards are perhaps tough of end of life discussions. Uh, Code Alliance creating tested a wonderful and fun sorting card game out to help you start. Um, it's called Green Burial <laughs> End of Life Plan of Care, Home Funeral Guidance. They have um, What is Lying in Honor, Pet Funerals About Us. So it's um, full. It's called Full Circle Living dying collection.com just so i put in wish cards go wish cards go wish them. yeah go wish and that uh, looks pretty decently pregnancy okay. infant loss yeah interesting i think that would be very interesting so here's another question gail says um didn't you say we come in alone and die alone then you said the person who was killed in an accident wasn't alone can you explain please well, what I meant by that, forgive me, you're right, exactly. It doesn't, that sounds completely wrong. Um, what I mean is a soul, a soul has to go through the tunnel by ourselves. We're met on the other side. We're met, for instance, that boy in the car accident had to leave that body by himself, but he was ushered in by his grandfather. So I should have said it that way. Um, I, I guess that's that, that's really the way I meant it was, and, and this, you know, when we leave the spirit side of life to come back into the body, you know, it's it's funny because people on the earth are very happy with a newborn baby, right? But right. the spirit people are upset because you're leaving the world, their world. Completely. And the opposite happens when we leave mm -hmm. the, the husk, the body, and go over there. But uh, yeah. we're never alone, but we have to go through that process, I should say, solitarily. Yeah. And by we just do. That, Gail it. Jean, when my father was passing a pancreatic cancer, I had the night shift to stay with him. One night he was twiddling his thumbs and fingers. I asked him what he was doing. And he said, I'm tying together all the loose ends of this intricate web of life we're all in. Isn't that the best? Wow. Isn't that the best? And, and that's what wow. happened with my near-death experience. There was a web. It was a matrix above my head. But and I know everybody was in tune. Everybody was attached to that web. So I think that's incredible. And um, we've got to forgive everyone, really. Yeah. We, want to, we want a nice passing. We want a nice journey. I think it's good to prepare yeah. now for your journey. Prepare right. today. Prepare now for your nice <laughs> journey you're going to have. Forgive <laughs> people. Make it nice. Make the so world true. nice. Fertilize the garden. Make the flowers grow, you know? All right. Uh, Diane Nadia says, my dad died on his anniversary, too. I know he waited for that day, too. Yeah, people wait for certain certain things. Yeah, they their do. higher self maybe helps them with that, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's so hard to answer some of these questions. In I the, know. Because they're such human questions, but they're, they're spiritual. But we only have the limitations of this human frame. To, so true. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Rachel Wood, my dog recently passed away and about a week ago before he passed, I talked to an animal communicator and that was literally like a doula. She got to tell me that my dog wanted to be at home. Oh, at home an anesthesia. And I had no idea that existed until she told me how great. Yeah, euthanasia at home. It, 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 nowadays, it's very popular where the vet will go to your house. and, and We will, did that. And yeah. You do that. It's very common. Yeah. That's what I would do. And I would have an extra one for me. 
That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Give a shot to her and keep one for me. <laughs> no, he's just kidding, everybody. Really, he's not going to do that. Um, <laughs> Lord, because I'm telling you, people are going to be writing. Does James going to do that? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I promise you. I won't, uh, I won't Lori, lucky. <laughs> In Canada, we have the MAID program, Medically Assisted in Dying. Oh, great. Hey, that's fantastic, Lori. That's, that's great. Fantastic. We have in the States that you're able to help those pass over, assist, assisted suicide, I guess you call it. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. Well, what a show. We learned a lot and we talked end. about a lot. Oh, my God. Now at the end here. I, I, goodness gracious. Oh, my God. And next week, we have a big show because it's our final week uh, show of the year. And we're going to be talking and a recap and what's talking happening about next year. But uh, what's going to happen next year? What's going to pick up psychically next year? And what's going to happen astrologically next year? And interesting year next year. Whoa! Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, James. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, Renee. Thanks, Bye, Renee. everybody. Bye-bye. You. Bye You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond. Featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. The James and Kelly Show.